Whoever wins, well... Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm a graphic designer based in Melbourne. A lot of you guys have been commenting and messaging me in regards to how I actually go about creating my vector art. And I think it's time that I show you guys how I do one style at least, the most recent style that I've been doing. And so the idea of this video is that I teach you exactly how I go about it. And I swear to God guys, it's really easy. And then I'm gonna be announcing a competition or a challenge for you guys to do whilst you're sitting at home with the newfound knowledge that you now have. So without further ado, I wanna make this kind of quick and simple. Let's jump to the computer and get started. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. The first thing that you wanna do is create your artboard. So jumping into Adobe Illustrator, presuming that you already have it. If you don't, then Adobe do do a 30 free day trial for a lot of their softwares. So I'll put that link in the description because you're gonna need it. All right, so come over to your file or you can just click create new. This is where you're deciding how big your artboard size is. If you wanna be posting it to Instagram, then you wanna come over here, click pixels, and you wanna change your width to 1080 and your height to 1350. However, if you wanna be printing your artwork on canvas, either in like an A3, A2, A1, then you can kinda of come over here and click on some of the templates. But as for now, because I want you guys to post it on Instagram and tag me and we'll make a portrait. So once you've got your artboard, what you wanna do is find a photo of something you want to vectorize. I'm gonna be using this screw as an example because I think it's gonna to demonstrate to you guys a lot about depth and shadowing. Okay, so once you've got your image copy and pasted into your artboard, the next thing that you wanna do is come over to your layers panel. You can usually do this by going up here, windows and clicking on your layers. Then what you wanna do is you wanna make a new layer coming down here, create new layer. You basically just wanna have your photo in one layer and then you're gonna be drawing your artwork in the other. So lock this layer here and click on your new layer, which we'll call art. If you wanna be organized, you can name this one image. So I've broken it down into four steps, drawing your shape, changing this shape to an outline, picking the color that's behind this shape, and then sending this shape to the back. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean, all right? So step one, drawing your shape. So your pen tool's up here. You can also click P on the keyboard as a shortcut. And then what you wanna do is simply, let's start over here, click, these are called anchor points, in areas that I think, or that you think, best represent whatever that color is that you're encompassing. All right, sweet. So now we've got our color, but as you can see, I've drawn completely over the area that I actually want to be shading in. And so now we're gonna be doing step two, converting your fill to a stroke or to an outline. So down here, you can see a big white box. If I change this to another color, I can make it any color that I want. If I click this here, it's gonna swap the fill to an outline, okay? However, this is extremely ineffective if you wanna be doing this over and over again. And so what I like to do is use the shortcut Shift X, okay? Once you do this, it'll actually do it instantly. So keep this in mind. Draw your shape, Shift X, will then convert it to an outline. That's step number two. Step number three is actually picking the color that you've now drawn around. So how are you gonna do this? You're gonna come over here to your eyedrop tool. It's I on your keyboard as a shortcut. Keep this in mind because these shortcuts are gonna make it a lot faster if you utilize them. And then I like to zoom in and pick a color. Luckily, this one is actually quite similar. And so we'll just go with this one, but do be kind of particular when you're picking your colors because it actually will make a difference. And once you've picked your color, you're gonna be sending it to the back. However, because this is the first shape, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna draw another shape and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we've got another shape forming here. As you can see, I've started to create it. However, it has not joined my other shape. Now listen to this. The first anchor point that overlaps with your previous shape has to click on another anchor. So as you can see, it's about to overlap here. I'm gonna click on the anchor point. And once you're at this point, it doesn't matter what you draw because this is going to be behind this object. Now, once I come out from underneath, and you'll see what I mean, I'm clicking on this anchor point here. This will make your artwork look very tidy afterwards. Okay, so this is the same color, 
and I'll cha just change it so you see what I mean. It's now on top, and that's not how we want it. We want to send it to the back. So step number four is sending it to the back. Usually you can right click on your shape, arrange, and send to back. Now the shortcut for this is shift, control, and then the left bracket, which I put on the screen right now, and that will send your object to the back. And that's basically it, guys. That's all I do for my vector art. I keep a very close eye on the shapes that I make, the direction that I make them, and the colors that I choose. And I'm going to go through that and give you a few tips once I finish this artwork. So I'm gonna finish this, speed it up, and I'll give you a few tips and announce a competition. I just spent half an hour vectorizing a screw just for you guys, yay. So that was actually surprisingly harder than I thought. Why? Well, because the screw comes in and out many different times whilst going down on an angle. And because it's a metallic surface, the shading is a bit crazy, but I think I did an all right job. So yesterday I actually re tried recording this and I lost a few files, so I have to do it again. And during that day, I vectorized a apple. Here's our apple, and I'm gonna use these as examples to just give you a few tips, okay? Tip number one, pick your colors. As you can see with this screw over here, I've picked the colors that I think is dark, and I've picked the colors that are definitely highlighted, and I've made sure to make them very distinct, and always keep that in mind. Tip number two, how big are your shapes going to be? The size and shape of your shapes that you are making will ultimately convey to the viewer what the surface is and what kind of depth. As you can see over on this apple, flatter surfaces that we're looking at front on, the shapes I've used are a lot bigger. However, as you come over to the side of the apple, the shapes become a lot thinner. This is because I'm trying to convey depth and perspective. Now keep this in mind when you're making your artwork as well. Tip number three, I'm gonna ask you a question. How many anchor points are you gonna use? If you wanna do something that's triangular, or also known as low poly vector art, and you wanna create something that looks a little bit like this, then you definitely be wanting to stick to a consistent three anchor points per shape, yeah? However, if you want something a little bit more abstract, like what I've done with the apple and the screw here, you probably wanna stay around seven to 12 different anchor points at one time, and you have to keep this consistent, otherwise your artwork's just gonna look out of whack if you don't. And tip number four, as I said before guys, make sure you're clicking your anchor points onto each other. As you can see, all of these anchor points here are on top of each other. As you can see here, here, everywhere. Every single anchor point is connected. Now I hope all of this makes sense to you guys. I've tried my very best to explain it as easy as possible. If you have any questions, feel free to message me directly or drop a comment down here. I'm more than happy to answer everyone's and I really, really want you guys to go get creative, okay? Now to the competition. So all I'm looking for is to see you guys jumping on Adobe Illustrator and trying your very best to create something. The only two things that I wanna see is creativity and I wanna see a little bit of color as well because who doesn't love color? How to enter, make your artwork, post it on Instagram, make sure you tag me at CK Creative and use the hashtag Vector with CK to be entered so that I can see it and collate all the artworks. Whoever wins, well, I will personally vectorize anything you want for me, any photo. It can be a photo of yourself or anyone of your family members. It could be a photo of a car. It could be a photo of your pet. It could be a photo of your favorite soccer player. I don't care. I'll spend at least 10 hours on it now. Just to put a number to that, I would charge a client around $500 for me to do something custom for them and so if you want me to do something like that for you background included then get creative guys okay you've got one week i'm so excited to see what you've got thank you so much for watching my videos and i will see you in the next one